Hey you guys, it is Wednesday, May 25th, and I'm gonna do another update video to take you around the garden. Uh, kinda interestingly, with last month's update, I did the video when it was a little bit dry right before the rain that came, and this video, it was very, very dry for all of May, and I'm doing the video right after we got some rain. So we got about two inches, a little over two inches on Monday, or maybe Sunday, um, Sunday night, Monday morning and then another uh, inch today. So full reset, um, the ground soaked it all up. There's not standing water or anything, but it was enough to really get a reset. And so this video, the energy of it is all about the chop and drop. I spent most of the afternoon in the garden and I'm not even close to all of the um, chop and drop kind of efforts that need to happen or that I want to happen just to keep it under control because this garden can become a jungle really quick. So. We're gonna see a lot of fruit. Um, the cool, okay, there was also that really late freeze and all the, the timing, so there is still plums finishing, mulberries are still going, and at the same time there's still blueberries in the garden, some peaches, the, just the end of the peaches, um, lots of tomatoes, and um, what else, what else? Yeah, we'll go find all the fruit in the garden. There's some fruit right here. So these are some little yellow pear tomatoes. I think I should get a basket to carry with us on this walk. All right, so a quick peek over at this garden and there's really not that much to see. The um, chickens have been getting in a lot, so that's kind of stunted the okra, but the okra is producing and main thing is just keeping it wet for the summer. But over here, we've got just a really nice energy. Done some clearing, <laughs> not, not, not that much. Um, I'm going to chop and drop the whole pecan tree. I wanted to do it before the video, but I'll have to link in an image or something. So what happened in May? So the drought, the dry spell, um, caused this persimmon to drop most of its fruit. So there's only a few that are holding. Um, and I don't even see one right in front of my... F oh, here are some. So there are a few on the tree, but nothing like what it did have. So one of my big projects was <laughs> taking out the top of that. Um, it had split in a few spots and I really wanted that pulse of light. This apple tree blew over in the storm just last night and so I um, staked it up on the other side but honestly it might be on its way out. But this apple is probably ready. I think, I think I'm feeling ready to pick it for this why not? There's our, our one little Dorset Golden. Yeah, so I did some trimming on the mulberry for structure. And I'm going to do, you know, roots and cuttings. I'm really excited for these flushes, you know, on those two citrus. I like talking about them. So I, I did a lot of clearing, you know, for that kumquat off the grape. Uh, you can see all my mulberry trimmings. The blueberries have been really staggered. They were kind of dry, but now that the rains come, they've filled back out. And there's a lot of tomatoes in here. This is that um, blue gold berry, I think. I don't have the basket, and I should. There's a lot of good goodies. Got some picking to do. But yeah, that one did well. And then the figs, we've got figs. That's what I forgot to mention at the start. So here's some blueberries. Ooh. Anyway, there's a lot more. I saw a cardinal enjoying them just a minute ago. And um, some of the citrus is starting to swell. You know. Uh, not a, some of the fruit dropped off of the kishu as well, and then lots of pomegranate swelling up. So these are getting big fast. It'll be a good year. There's a lot more up there. So lots of fruit set on the pomegranate into the jungle. Some more persimmons right in front of us. A duck under them. So I'm gonna dig up some of the jujube. That'll and this is goji berry that's also they you know sucker and 
grow from the roots. Holy moly, that's a strong fragrance. Holy moly. Wow. Eisenhardia Texana, but it honestly, that was crazy strong. Okay. <laughs> um, what else to show? What else to show? So this is more of the top of the elm tree. I'm just bringing it over here and I brought a bunch back over there. Um, you see, so here, this branch snapped off the avocado from the wind last night. So um, I did collect a little bit of sign wood maybe to share. Here's where, you know, some of the chop and drop kind of energy. Um, but yeah, the avocado had a lot of yellowing leaves, I think from the dry spell. Um, but not totally sure because the other one did as well. But, you know, it, it thinned out the fruit a little bit, but there's a lot holding. And so there will still be avocados. What else? I mowed finally. So more blueberries, kind of the end of the blueberries. But they've been um, good since I watered them, really. Um, the rain helps a lot, but I did, I did bring buckets of water since the last video. And then there's some good blood oranges swelling up, so that's all good. And these mulberries are pretty good too, these white ones. Um, it's sweet. The white is very just like straight sweet, and this is just a wild seedling. See all this dead? Let me jump back to show you some grass. So these floppy things are Scarlet Bartlett. All of them are coming from grafts, and it's not the right kind of growth. So it'll be interesting. All this top stuff is grafted. Um, like here you can kind of see it, but nothing like a new central leader. It might have all flopped over in the storm. The bees have all swarmed. <laughs> I uh, got behind. And what else? Oh, here's for sure. we got to collect some of these. Tomato, tomatoes. Finding tomatoes in the jungle. There's three or four. Actually, I'm just going to leave them here and come back for them. But, good season for tomatoes. The stink bugs have been bad, but I get on them. I, I love smashing stink bugs. I'm like a stink bug hunter. The trick is to just um, smash them all against the tomato with your hand. <laughs> At least that's my technique. So, yeah, more cherry tomatoes. Ooh, there's a good cluster. And there were stink bugs, too. Yeah, this is... Well, I dropped that one. This is stink bug feeding damage. You see those discoloration? They're sucking the life out of it. So, I got to Okay, here they are. See the culprits right there? I'm gonna have to do this one-handed. Gross y'all out. Got him. The smell goes away pretty fast. And you can always use their um, defense mechanism is to fall downward so you can catch them. Always go underneath. All right, so this m morning it was all covered with figs. The chickens ate most of them, but oh, I'll see here. I don't mind eating after the animals. I kind of like it. There was um, my friend who's Hare Krishna. Um, he uh, he would like eat after his guru, you know, like the remnants from his plate, and it had this like spiritual energy to it. And he talked about it, and I actually feel like. You know, the, the birds that peck on it, maybe the rodents, even the ants, the insects, they're like my guru. And so I enjoy eating after them. And if y'all have never had a um, bird pecked strawberry, they're always the sweetest. But this is just about perfect LSU gold. Let me show y'all the inside. Golden yumminess. And that's mostly what I ate today. I ate figs off the ground and, um, you know, a few other things. But anyway, there's, so 
This is called the Breba crop, these first big ones, and then the main crop are these smaller ones that are coming in about a month, maybe a little less, but good to have figs. I did a bunch of graphs. Let me set these figs down. I won't show you the ones up in the tree, but I can show you some of the ones at ground level. Right here, we've got Amanzaki. That's that little tip, catching some sunlight. And we've got this one. So these are all like root suckers. This is Hayakumi. So this is Phil Sauber um, collected this sign wood. Here's another one. This is Mikatomi. It's kind of dense little push. Um, and then there's one I lost the label already. And then there's Eureka, another one that took, but probably not worth the walk. So more mulberries. So just fruit everywhere. This is another native white tree and that has some of the Australian green that are also ripe up at the top. Let's go this way. Say goodnight to the bees. Good night, bees. And we'll sneak back here. This is a random tomato. Did I plant this tomato? I might not have. This might be wild Texas cherry. That sometimes happens, you know. Those tomatoes are strong, and look, there's a flag and a flower on a banana with very few leaves. Well, that's okay. I'm never really about the banana fruit. I'm more about this fruit right here. We got more avocados on the fantastic. Again, it thinned out its leaves, so I think it was environmental rather than like a localized disease. Um, I think it was related to that dry spell. But there's avocados. But a few citrus missing. I already saw that. <laughs> Letting the sunflowers grow. Um, so you can see, like, with the chop and drop energy, this is going to be one of my main stash piles. Like, um, I'm just going to dump all through here. Um, here's peppers that now that it got rain, see I never bucketed water to this. Um, looks like that's the Peter pepper. Um, look at the growth on the moringa, loving the heat, just going to town. And then what else? A few more blueberries to eat. This is emerald and they did swell up eventually they were pretty good um grape fruit set has already happened so they're here and starting to swell little baby muscadines and yeah still plenty more chop and drop to do though all across the board you know just lots to do All right, so there's already gherkin. You know, this weed is already up and producing. And then this area has um, okra definitely producing well. Uh, this is another uh, blue something, you know, tomato from Brenda that's huge. And then that's actually all tomato. So that's a wall of wild Texas cherry to nibble on. We can go say goodnight to the ladies who've been getting lots of wax moth larvae. There's, um, I still left the equipment in there. Hey ladies, how's it going? Everybody went to bed early. As they do, they're good kiddos. A bug got to it, so it's perfect. It's been 
sweetened up for me and it's soft and it's ready and oh man I had one earlier today that was so good it's it's perfect I'm it's my new uh, well this was the first year but man it's good we'll have to go taste some peaches all right so The peaches have mostly been done. The rain knocked a lot off. But, let's see. This one is half good. Uh, get the mushy part off. Sharing with the bugs. Pizzas are still better than plums, but that plum was special. Oh yeah, these are the last few. This one I will take to share. This will be one of the last ones and look pretty good, solid and firm. All right, it's clean. The lawn has been mowed. That's probably one of the bigger things. And yeah, I'm trying to clean up. Man, so much to do. So, there are more tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes everywhere. This is like a sweet million. And they look pretty good, but I see a stink bug crew that needs to get smashed. So we will pause the video. Alright, it's getting dark on me. But, I want to show you the new leaf right here starting to come out it's gonna be even bigger than the last and it's got a really cool little white on that side a big chunk of white so cool variegation coming out on this one all right you guys that's about it if uh, you get the message in time do the chop and drop in your food forest it's a good time for it anytime we are sealing the moisture in rather than sealing the dryness in it's the way to do it here in Houston because in Houston we don't have a really strong wet season, dry season. It's just like when the rains come, that's the time to chop and drop. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.